React Native comes with built-in components, touchable opacity and touchable highlight, which can be used to add interactivity within your applications beyond what the default button component provides. And that is what we will look at in this tutorial and also look at their difference. So let's go. Within an empty React Native application, we create a variable for fruits, which is going to be an array of some of the most popular fruits in the world. And when a fruit will get pressed, this function called on fruit press will get called, which uses the alert module to alert an item on screen. Normally, I prefer to use console.warn for debugging, but I just wanted to demo the alert module quickly for you as well. Within the UI, we will iterate over all of the fruits, and for each fruit, we will display a button with the text containing the fruit name and on press wired to the fruit press. As you can see, the buttons work as you would expect, but a key issue over here is that the buttons look very different on iOS versus Android. Now, what would be great if you could get our touchables to look exactly the same on the different platforms. But before I continue, I'm going to replace alert with console.warn so I don't have to spend the rest of the tutorial dismissing alerts. Now we're going to create a custom button like component with an outer view styled with item box and an inner text styled with item text. The styles aren't particularly complicated. The box is something with the margin padding and a background color, and the text is something with a large text of the color white. Now we replace our current button component with a view wired to item box and a text wired to item text. And once this renders, you can see that this looks like a nice thing that the user should be able to press. But of course, as we press that right now, there is nothing wired to on press, and there is actually no prop that we could pass to the view or the text component to make that wiring. And this is where the touchable opacity component comes in. Not only does it provide an on press function, but when it is actually pressed, it will decrease the opacity of the children that are passed in. Now, right now, when we hold the press on the tomato, you can see that the default opacity decrease is quite significant. Fortunately, we can change that with a prop called active opacity and we can set it to a higher value, for example, 0.8. And now as we press the buttons, they do not go as transparent as they were doing before. Now, a neat feature about the touchable opacity component is that it is actually a view component in itself as well. So we can actually remove the child view and just use the styles that we were passing over there as the style prop for touchable opacity. And this behaves exactly how it was doing before. Similar to the touchable opacity component is the touchable highlight component and I've seen plenty of people getting confused by the difference. So let's take a look at another example that should simplify it for us. We start off with a blank application where the background is now set to a nice slate value and we have similar item box and item textiles. The key difference over here is that the item box is designed to flex completely into the parent and will place the text child in its center. We have an array of colors this time which are red, blue and green and within the view we iterate over the colors and map each of them into a touchable opacity, which contains the view wide to item box and a text wide to item text. The text displays the color name and the view has its background color wired to color value. Now, because these are touchable opacities, as we click different colors, we can see the background color come through, which is currently slate. Now, of course, if we change the background color to something else, like a yellow value, and then click the different color buttons, you can see that you get a different experience where the yellow is shining through. This brings us to the touchable highlight component. If we replace touchable opacity with touchable highlight and then click the different colors, you can see that we get a different experience. What is happening over here is two things. The opacity is still being decreased of the underlying view, but instead of the background shining through, we get what is known as an underlying color. The underlying color that we saw right now is black, but we can modify both of these values for example, we can set the active opacity to be a small value, for example, 0.2 to make it more transparent and change the underlying color to something like white. And now as we click the different colors, you can see that they turn even more significantly transparent and the underlying color that shines through is white. And just for fun, what we can also do is turn the underlying color to be transparent. And now we get the same experience that we would get with touchable opacity, where the background yellow is going to shine through as we press the different colors. Now there is one restriction with touchable highlight compared to touchable opacity in that it can only have a single child, whereas a touchable opacity can have as many children just like a standard view. Most commonly for quick UI tweaks, I find myself using touchable opacity and then when we want complete control over the UX of our buttons, we would use something like a pressable, which is a newer component that we will look at in the next lesson. Thank you for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next one.